Hello and welcome back to another episode of Music Biz Weekly Podcast, sponsored by our friends over at Hypebot. Thank you, Bruce. Um, today, Michael is out on assignment. No, he's not. Uh, I, I think he had a dentist appointment or something. Anyway, today we have uh, a very special guest. We have Ari Herstand. Um, Ari is, uh, let me see if I get this right. Um, you're an author. Uh, mm -hmm. You wrote the book, How to Make It in the New Music Business, which I highly recommend. Um, you're an artist advocate. You're a singer-songwriter. Um, did I miss anything? Um, that's that's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, I wear many hats, and so depending on the day of the week, uh, my titles change. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. first of all, for, for people who haven't read your writing or don't sure. know who you are, haven't listened to your music... Uh, tell people a little bit about who Ari Herstand is and how you got to <laughs> where you are. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so I've been a, a musician, um, kind of singer-songwriter most of my career, and more recently I launched a funk project. Um, for the past, I would say, kind of 12 uh, years professionally full-time uh, without a day job, and then you know years before that while working at Starbucks, um, I started my music career in Minneapolis, and for a while, uh, as I was kind of getting things going um, and booking shows and building my fan base and touring around and getting songs placed on TV shows and all of that stuff, I was doing that all independently, just kind of figuring it out as I went. And I started to get a lot of questions from other musicians. Um, I play a lot of colleges and high schools and festivals. And so I was interacting with a lot of kind of younger musicians and I would get all these questions coming in um, and I would get back to everybody. And then after a while, word spread that if you had questions about music call business, Ari. call Ari. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, that was cool, but I, I kind of didn't have time to respond to anybody anymore or, or to everybody, I should say. And so um, I launched my, this blog, Ari's Take, uh, about, um, let's see, um, seven years ago or so. Wow. And it was just my brother's a web developer, my friend's a graphic design artist. And I just like all the questions I was getting, kind of the most frequently asked questions, I popped them up on the blog. Um, I answered them, and then anytime I learned about anything in the industry, uh, or with my own career really is what was happening, I would just write about it. So I got screwed over by a club, it's like, oh, this is a horrible <laughs> deal, don't do this kind of a deal, I right, learned the hard way, right. or like, um, I just got a song placed on a TV show, here's how I did it, and here's how you can do it, yeah. or you know, this is uh, what's working for me, um, on uh, here's how I charted on iTunes and this is what I did yeah. and you can do this too and you know and then kind of grew and then um, some of my articles started to get shared around a lot I started to get asked to write for various publications like right. Digital Music News, um, Music Connection Magazine, American Songwriter and so that eventually kind of um, well that that gave me access which for an independent artist was huge I was able to sit down with anyone in the music industry I could call them up and just sit sure. down with them and ask them all the questions <laughs> Yeah. that indie artists had that we just don't have the access to ask these people. Yeah. So I took that really that responsibility really seriously and I I was doing that at one point I was conducting 3 to 4 interviews a week um for a few years just trying to you know, brain dump everybody, like just sure. the smartest people in the industry, the people who are most successful that were making it happen in like new innovative ways. I wanted to um, just learn how they were doing it and then teach other musicians and share that information. Yeah. I think that's um, so good, Ari, because look, a hundred years ago, I toured as a musician and I wish there was a resource <laughs> like you because we didn't know. You know, I mean, yeah. we thought that if regionally we could fill up some rooms and maybe get a song on the radio back then, we're thinking our goal was to get signed. Now, sure. today, and I'd love to get your take on this. No sure. pun intended. Um, <laughs> today, a musician has to do a lot more work than that. Today, you've got your socials, right? You may have ECRM, some kind of email list. You know, mm -hmm. you've got to communicate with the venues. And you talked about, um, you know, college touring. And I read a piece yeah. that you wrote about that. And I mean, just taking a look at your book, I mean, yeah. how does an artist like you have the right. time in the day to not only do all of that, but help all these other aspiring artists and then create your own music? Right. So it's all about 
laying out your goals, your objectives, and then your priorities. And, yeah. and I have daily priorities which shift every day depending on what I'm working so, for. So for instance, uh, my band Brass Roots District, we're playing a show at the end of this month. So this month, uh, all of that is is heavily weighted on promoting that show and getting ready for that, that show. So those priorities are really high up. Whereas two months ago, um, they were pretty far down the priorities list and I was spending time working on all the other things that I was doing, like launching uh, Ari's Take Academy and all these, and like the book edits for the second edition. And there was other things that were kind of coming up that had to take priority. So I always tell musicians, the most important thing that you can do is lay out your goals, concrete goals, six month, one year, and potentially five year, but six month and one year are so important because everybody has different goals and objectives. Absolutely. And when somebody comes to me and says like, well, what do I do uh, next with my music? Or like, how do I get my career off the ground? I tell them I have no idea because I haven't heard your music. I don't know what's important to you. I don't know what your goals are because you know, uh, I have some friends who are not interested in touring, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And but I need to know that going into it. If they say like, I, "How can I make a music career happen?" Because if you want to tour, then we can talk about that. But if you don't, we can talk about that too. And so that's why, like, laying out your goals—they're very personal because everyone's goals are going to be different. Absolutely. And so I like say. You know, for your six month goals, write out very specific, concrete goals like, okay, in six months, I want to get at least one song placed on a TV show. Now, that's a specific goal. Right. And if you write that down, you're like, okay, now I know the end game. Now I can reverse engineer that. Mm -hmm. And so when you lay out a goal like that and you make sure that you're going to reach that goal, it's, it's less about trying something halfway and then giving up because like, well, that doesn't work for me, so I'm gonna try something else and that doesn't work for me. And you don't really know what you're doing because you try a million different things half ass none of them work, so you're like, well, nothing works. <laughs> like, well, that doesn't, that's not true. Like, if you have that goal, I wanna get a song placed on a TV show in six months, okay, which TV show? Yeah. Will any do? No, right. of course not. If you make acoustic music, Empire's not the show for you. If you right. make hip hop music, Grey's Anatomy's not the show for you, so you have to figure out the shows, and then who's the music supervisor? What's a music supervisor? Maybe they only work with licensing companies. What are licensing companies? <laughs> <laughs> How do you get a licensing code? These are all right. the steps and the and that's just that one thing. That's just one thing. And so if that's your goal, you have to put in the work to achieve that goal. And those are all the steps and the work that needs to go into that. Gotcha. So that's why like, you know, yeah, some people are like, well, I want to get, you know, I want to get a million streams on Spotify. And I, I'm like, okay, that's a, that's a, oh, that's a goal. That's a concrete goal. That's a goal. But then I, then I asked them. Now, why do you want that? Like right. legitimately, because I, I think not only do you want to lay out goals, you want to ask yourself, why do you want the goal yeah. that you want? Because someone came to me, this manager I was talking to last week, and uh, he's just like, you know, I just, I just need to get, I just need to get the deal, and no, no labels are interested in my artists right now. And uh, I'm like, okay, but why do you want a deal? Right. And I had advice him like, it was like, well, because, you know, we need, uh, we need, we need money and, and we need money to fund the things. I'm like, okay, so you don't actually want a deal. You want money, <laughs> right? So money. Like that's different. Money, that's very different. And he's like, but yeah, but we just need to get on new music Friday. I'm like, uh -huh. why do you want to get on new music Friday? Like, why do you want that? He's yeah. like, well, my artist really wants that. Why does your artist really want new music Friday? Let's, you need to have a conversation about that. He's like, well, you know, it's going to bring a lot of streams. Why do you want a lot of streams? Right. Because, well, it's going to, you know, bring fans and money. I'm like, okay, so mm. you actually want fans and money. You don't actually need to be on New Music Friday for that. Right. Right. So it's really, it's setting goals, but then really digging to the core of why of they why. want those. Exactly. I think that's really smart, Ari. And I'll, I'll tell you, I work with a lot of artists from developing artists to, you know, some of the largest in the, in the business. And the first question mm -hmm. I ask them is, mm -hmm. you know, what, number one, what is the narrative? Like, what's the story of this release? Why should yep. anybody care? It can't just be Ari's got a new record coming out. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. Is it, what is it about? Is there a story behind it? What's, you know, is it a, the record you always wanted to make? Are you playing with a certain new style or different musicians? And then the second part of that, and this is what you kind of touched on there, is, you know, what's your vision? What mm -hmm. are your goals? And yeah. I find that a lot of folks will focus on streaming. 
And I love what mm-hmm. you just said because, first of all, you know, streaming's a, a piece of the puzzle. There's no doubt about sure. it. But, sure. you know, I'm doing a, a panel at Music Biz called A Playlist is Not a Marketing Plan. Because, <laughs> you know, you start, when you talk to people, they're like, I got to be on Rap Caviar, man. I got to be on yep. there. Okay. That's, mm-hmm. that's a goal and you can get. Right. But what happens if you're not in the first 20 tracks? You know, maybe you're not going to get the recognition that maybe you think you will, and and that's okay. But what happens when you're dropped from that playlist? Do you exactly. have everything else lined up? And I think that's kind of right. what you preach to people is, yeah. Eh, there's a lot more to it. Sync is important, but it's not mm-hmm. everything. You know, right. Streaming's important. Touring, right. merch. Yep. Well, and yeah, and, and that actually, that's a really good point. And I think the industry is so obsessed with playlists right now, and people are so obsessed with getting on playlists, but they don't think about, and then what? Right. And so it's like, you get, like, I've, I've talked to musicians who they got on a few really hot Spotify playlists that yeah. brought them millions of streams a month, which which turned into tens of thousands of dollars a month, and that legitimately, and they were able to quit their day job. And then a few <laughs> months later, they got dropped from those playlists. Their streams went down to virtually zero uh, and they had to go beg for their day jobs back. Right. This is happening Ouch. all the time. Ouch is right. Because like the thing is, is that playlists are fickle. The thing is, when you get on a playlist, you're not getting fans really from that playlist. You're getting streams right. and you're getting monthly listeners. Right. You're getting monthly listeners because they're fans of that playlist. They're not fans of you. Not necessarily. The right. Not necessarily. And there's a very small margin of listeners of that playlist that actually do the research to dig in. It's like, oh, what is this song that I like? Who is this artist? Let me follow them on Instagram. Let me sign up for their email list. Let me buy a ticket to their show. Let me find them on YouTube. Like doing the actual research to like become a fan of that artist. It is so rare that that actually happens for when listeners are listening to playlists. And so playlists can help with the money you can if you get on hot playlists you can make some money great it can help with some notoriety it can open a few doors but the thing is is that exactly like you said that is that cannot be your entire (laughs) marketing plan right your marketing plan it's get on playlists yeah i i saw the stat the other day and i I asked a friend of mine at spotify about it Mm -hmm. and he confirmed that it, it varies by label but roughly mm-hmm. between 25 and 30% of spins just on Spotify come from playlists. So then there's mm-hmm. like 75%. Think about it. When you and I hear about an artist that we like, you know, like when I first started hearing about your music, yeah. I didn't go to a playlist. I went right. to your artist right. page, right? right. And exactly. then I look and I kind of take a look at, oh, okay, well, these are some of the more popular tracks, just like you would at iTunes in the day and like you yep. might wherever. And I think that behavior people need to think about, just like you can't bank your career on sync and say, oh, I got a sync placement. It paid this much. I'm going to quit my job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, for sure. And that's why I really like looking at, um, I I like looking at the stats on on Spotify artists in the back end. When you look at that, uh, those graphs of the percentages of where your listeners are coming from. Yes. The ones that you want to the source of the stream exactly yeah. the ones that you want to see are from your profile because that means they're going to your profile and listening down or their saved Saving library and their pro and their uh saved playlist you don't want you know, the highest percentage to be <laughs> editorial playlists right because their editorial playlist once you get dropped from those playlists you drop back down to nothing. Yeah. And if no one saved your music and they're not coming to your profile, then you're lost. You're done. You know. Yeah. And so uh, that's that's what I have been focusing my efforts on. Like my my band Brassroots District, we're on zero editorial playlists. We only have three songs that we just launched this project. Uh-huh. Um, we only have three songs that we have about 150,000 streams right now on Spotify. We're like 20,000 monthly listeners. But the bit the nice. better number is we have 6,000 followers, which Spotify followers, followers on Spotify. Right. So like if you, if you're looking at, you know, I, I, this is another favorite game that I play is that I go to other um, artists, Spotify profiles. And I'm like, wow, they have 300,000 monthly listeners. Oh my gosh, they have 10 million streams. And then I click the about section, scroll all the way down. I'm like, wow, they only have 600 followers. Like that doesn't add up. Like right. that, it's because people are listening to them on playlists. Uh-huh. And so 
the followers is actually somebody making the intention, oh, I like this artist, I wanna hear more about them and wanna follow when they have new songs coming out. So we, we built up all these followers and then when our new song came out, it jumped up on release radar for them nice. and it showed up on all the release yeah. radars and now we're building that relationship with that fan. Yeah. And uh, and so now um, we uh, there's a friend of mine, Lucidius. He's this hip hop artist. Yeah, yeah. I read your he, article. It's, yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. So he, he <clears throat> three years ago he had nothing. Yeah. Uh, no fans, no listeners, and now today without a manager and without a label. Um, he has 500,000 monthly listeners. He's got about 60,000 followers just on Spotify. Um, he's got about 5 million streams a month. And But this, but these are real fans because on Instagram, he's got 100,000 followers. On Facebook, he's got 250,000 likes. These are real fans that are finding him, and he's on zero editorial Spotify I saw Spotify that, and that is playlist. amazing. Right. Let, just, right. Let's <laughs> no be playlist. really clear for, for people who don't follow this stuff really closely. Sure. There's a couple of things that you're talking about that I think are really important. One is when you look at a playlist, there are mm -hmm. monthly followers to the playlist and then monthly listeners. And on a mm -hmm. playlist, man, it doesn't matter how many followers because that's like clicking right. Levi's on Facebook. You look right. at the monthly listeners, that's the right. key metric. But when you go to the artists, it's kind of mm -hmm. inverse. You really want to go, well, how many people really want to follow that's true. You. That's a, that's a yes. commitment. And yes. and I look at those numbers too and and I'm always surprised that some of these folks will get into some of these big playlists, but mm. I'll I'll look at the playlist and I'll see that they're like the 400th track out of 700. Right. And I wonder, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. how much engagement and how many butts in the seats are you going to get? From that right. now, if you're in the number one slot, or maybe in the first mm -hmm. dozen or so, and mm -hmm. you're hitting a lot of streams, yeah, then people like me, I'll, I'll go in there and go, oh, who is that? But kind of mm -hmm. after that, you know, it may become a little bit more background music. Absolutely, and and that's the thing. I mean, it's playlists are the new radio, and just like when people would pop on the radio, it they were passively listening uh, for the most part. And at work, you pop on the radio, people are yeah. popping on playlists yeah. now, and it's a very <laughs> lean back experience. Um, that's why, you know, Discover Weekly, if you get on those kinds of algorithmic customized playlists, yeah. uh, that can be really helpful because people are using their Discover Weekly to discover music. Right. And when you can get on those kinds of playlists, so that to me, Discover Weekly is more attractive than getting on a really hot Spotify playlist. 100%. And yeah. like John Mayer, uh, he brought on the night game as his direct support for his his opening tour. I mean, for his tour, his his arena tour, because one of their songs popped up on his Discover Weekly on Spotify. <laughs> That's and awesome. And he brought this band that literally only had one song out, and he loved this song so much. I mean, it sounded just like the Police, and he's a huge Police fan. Sure. And so he, uh, <laughs> but still, he brought that's great. Them yeah, and they were his direct support for the entire tour because they popped up on his Discover Weekly. So Discover Weekly, it, it can actually move the needle and, and you can gain real fans from that. Do you think the same thing and, with Release Radar too? You know, because for those that don't know, when you put your yes. music in to be released, you know, mm -hmm. it, it the people that follow you, it's dropped mm -hmm. into their Release Radar. And yes. personally, I find a lot of great music in Release Radar that I might yes. have missed. Do you feel like that? Absolutely, because you know you may click, you may be listening to an artist or even a playlist. And you're like, man, I really like this artist. I, you go in and you follow that artist, and that's that's like taking three steps deep, which not many people do. But if you do that, you're saying, I want to follow this artist. I like this artist. So then maybe they release a song eight months later. You've already forgotten about this artist, but then it pops up on your release radar. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, this is a great artist. Yeah. And then you can start to build that relationship again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you ever ask people? Um, for your music personally, do you ever ask people via socials or email or whatever, hey, follow me on Spotify or, you know, save my music to your personal, do you ever go sure. take that step? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there are some distributors that give you good tools like the pre-save tool. Uh, DistroKid has that pre-save. Yep. I mean, a lot of, the, uh, I think CD Baby does it with their show, uh, dot .co. And, um, you know, the, the pre-save tool, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Feature, yeah, the pre-save tool can be really helpful asking your fans to follow you um absolutely like i'll create um those those fan links like the smart you all pivot link um yeah, yeah. when a song comes out and, and depending on what service they like i mean 
We're talking a lot about Spotify, but it's worth mentioning that more people in the States actually use Apple Music. So, you know, we can't neglect Apple Music. Uh, yes, more people in the music industry use Sorry about Spotify. It. Sorry if you can hear my dog. He's oh. saving my life from the UPS guy. So, you know, <laughs> Apollo, shh. Anyway, sorry. I can no, still hear you fine. Important. I hope you can hear me. But no, you yeah, make a yeah, valid absolutely. point. You know, we yeah. talk about Spotify because people think of it as like the giant. I always tell people, oh my God, Apollo, <laughs> stop. Apollo. <laughs> I, I always tell people that, you know, look, YouTube's the number one streaming service. Don't ignore YouTube. And, you right. know, Apple Music is a juggernaut, but also with all of these smart speakers, you know, mm-hmm. with the, you know, the Amazon Echo. Amazon Echo, yeah. You know, it's growing really fast. I, I don't think you can really afford to ignore any of these digital service providers because, look, it's still in its infancy, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and for sure. I mean, the industry has been so obsessed with Spotify the last three years because, I mean, for one, uh, discovery has been huge. The playlists sure. have, have, have shown to no really doubt. drive traffic and revenue, mm-hmm. which is huge. Um, and they, they list the numbers uh, publicly, the streaming yeah. numbers, the follower numbers, all of those numbers. Yeah. And people love playing the numbers they games sure like do. they did on YouTube. Um, so because Apple hides those numbers, you can't really uh, gamify it as much and you can't have that competitive <laughs> analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, publicly with Apple Music or with Amazon or with any of them. But yes, absolutely, it's worth mentioning that so many people have Echoes and they say, hey, Alexa, you know, play Brass Roots District yeah. and that's going to bring some streams. And so it's we're still figuring out exactly the best way how to market to the people that are utilized in each of these platforms. Um, we have more, I've more recently... Uh, discovered kind of some some great ways that are working right now to market to people using Spotify, Apple Music, even YouTube, mm-hmm. um, and and a lot of those kinds of interactive streaming services. Yeah. Um, but yeah. there's a lot of you know in the states, it's worth mentioning that there's a lot of people still using Pandora. I was Pandora just going to mention that I love <laughs> Pandora and I work a lot yeah. with jazz artists. They've mm-hmm. got one playlist over there with like 12 million people. You can't count mm-hmm. out. Um, right. Um, Pandora. The other thing, right. just really quickly, for those who don't know, when you see those numbers on Spotify that says, oh, this is, you know, you look at the top five and then you expand it to the top 10 tracks on an artist mm-hmm. and it says there's a million streams, that's just so everybody knows, that's based on one second. That's not what you get paid on and that's not what you'll see in Nielsen Connect. You know, the actual numbers based on 30 seconds plus. So when you right. compare that number with your statement, which I like to do because then you can kind of mm-hmm. see what the skip rate is. So if you got yeah. a million on Spotify and 500,000 on your statement, you go, okay, I got a 50% skip rate. It, mm-hmm. it just, you know, so you don't take those numbers. Um, <laughs> too well, seriously. that's that, right. And, and to try to compare the numbers with your, your um, statements, I mean, it's uh, right. Spotify, they counted at 30 seconds. And even when you're looking at like, Facebook views versus YouTube views. Facebook counts the video view at three seconds, whereas YouTube counts the video view at 30 seconds right. if, if the video is longer than 30 seconds. Right. And so it's um, the, that's why the numbers game, it, it, it's a lot of vanity numbers and metrics and, sure. and you can't really claim a lot of that. Um, but you know, that's why you have to look at revenue, how much revenue you bringing in because right. that's real, those are real numbers. Right. And then how many, People are buying tickets. Right. Those are real numbers. Right. Um, buying but that's merch. not going to stop me from saying, hey, we hit a million streams right. on Spotify. <laughs> Which is fine. You know, pop that on your EPK. It's, that's yeah. something to, you know, it's a it's a point where that can open some doors and maybe it can get somebody to take a second look at you. But that's the thing because it's, it can't be all about numbers. A few years ago, yeah. it was really um, attractive to a lot of people and people did it where they – they would inflate their numbers artificially. Yes. They would use bots. They yes. would pay services to inflate their Instagram numbers or their Twitter SoundCloud, numbers, followers, socials, or SoundCloud, yeah. all of that. Even Spotify people figured out how to do that. Yep. And you can see through that really quickly. If I go to somebody's Instagram profile and they have 50,000 followers on Instagram and their photos are only getting 150 likes in like seven comments, I'm like sure. those are fake followers. Those are not real people that are following them. Or if they are, they're not engaged at all. And so they're not fans and they don't care about this artist. Yeah. So 
I, you know, you always want to look at the engagement rate. I feel like we're now in a post follower reality in the music industry where it's not about followers. It's about engagement. 100%. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. just so people know, you know, engagement can cover a lot of ground, right? It can be more than a like and a follow. It can be a video view. It can be a share. It can be a comment. I mean, there's so many types of engagement, but that's Mm -hmm. real engagement, not just kind of this click, you know, like. The other thing is anybody who has access to data, which any booking agent will have, any record company will have, you know, they'll see like this, oh, he added... 10,000, you know, SoundCloud followers in one day. In a day right. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, don't, yeah, it's, no, don't do it's it. It's not real. So right. one thing I really wanted to talk to you about is I, I've read a lot of your work and I think mm-hmm. the one that I probably come back to more than anything else was a, a piece you wrote called Who is the Best Digital Distribution Company for Music? Because right. I've worked with a lot of these people and it was interesting for me to see somebody else's take because I get yeah. frustrated at sometimes the lack of communication or just responses from some of these folks. Sure. And it, this is simple stuff, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and when I read through yours, it sounded like you had really done some exhaustive research <laughs> and maybe to your own detriment a little bit, you know, yeah, you got yeah. you, you got kind of knocked around. But we'll yeah. get to that. Before I start with that, I know at the beginning of the article, and you and I kind of talked offline about this, um, you hadn't at the at that time you hadn't gotten a hold of the orchard and maybe in grooves. Have you have uh-huh. you touched base with them yet? Have you been able to get somebody a live person? Um, you know, I kind of uh, I haven't followed up and um, l- lately, so no, I haven't really done extensive research. I've I've talked to a lot of managers. Um, and artists who've worked with The Orchard and worked with InGroove. So I have their experience with it. I haven't added them to my guide because, I mean, primarily um, the 16 companies that I review uh, primarily work with independent artists and managers. Yeah, they're not, whereas like, you know, Orchard and InGrooves, they work a lot with labels, indie yeah, they labels. Fall more they fall into like an ADA, Caroline, mm-hmm. Cobalt. Exactly, exactly. Um, so I, I would, um, you know, I, I'm interested in talking to them and exploring them. Um, I, I've reviewed Not to six, put you on the spot. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. But the thing is, is like, I reviewed 16 companies and literally every day somebody hits me up and is like, oh, what about what about uh, United Masters? What about right. Spin Up? What about Record Union? What about, right. you know, and like there's probably 15 Holy other cow. ones that I haven't touched on. Yeah. And I'm like, well, <laughs> there's like a threshold right now because now having this guide of 16 companies that I – and when I review them, I literally talk to somebody high up at the company yeah. for about an hour and I sit down with them and then I fact check my report with them before I go public with them. It. I send it to them and I say, can you confirm that everything on this guide is correct? Right. You and they the write back. They're like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so I make sure that it's all it's all correct and I try to keep it up to date. It's hard to stay up on 16 companies and so oh when anybody gosh. right <laughs> and I get hit by that. They're like, you know, this isn't correct, Ari. I'm like, okay, thank you for letting me know. I'll, it was I'll, maybe I'll at the time, right. you know. It was like a month ago, but if it's not anymore, cool. I'm going to hit up the company yeah. and if they've really changed how they're operating, I'll change it on the guide. But I rely on the community to tell me um, the the changes that are happening. And I tell all the companies, I'm like, hey, if you make a change Let and you know. want to change on the guide, hit me up and I'll change yeah. it. Like, I have no problem with that. Um, I just, I yeah, I do. I'm an artist. I do a lot of things. So I'm like, I can't, I don't, I don't like monitor all 16 companies on a daily basis. And so <laughs> when things change, like I try to keep it yeah. up. But Well, um, I think, I think it's fantastic and it's a great kind of, thank you. Uh, reference point to start with because I think you would even tell artists look this is what I found out but right. do do your own you know research on some of these things they do evolve and change and you've mentioned that in the article like these guys started off kind of crappy but it looks like they yep. turned some things around Absolutely. but I also it was interesting because I've worked with a couple of them recently one that's not on your list that's really super small and then another one that is that you happen to have an, a little bit of trouble with and I don't necessarily mm-hmm. want to call anybody out by name but tell, talk a little bit about some of these folks that didn't really like some of the things that you were writing 
Well, that's yeah, that's the thing, and I have no problem calling out Ditto. Uh, <laughs> like you don't want to call their name, but I'll say their wow. name. I don't fucking care. All right, there you I, go. They could come at. They've already come after me. Like I, they've come after me so many times. They tried. They threatened lawsuits. They tried to buy me off. They, they, uh, first they tried to play nice and be like, "How much can we pay you for you to change your shit?" I'm like, "That's not how it works. Uh, I can't how be much bought." Have you got? Um, what's that? <laughs> it's like a Todd <laughs> Snyder line. How much have you got? Yeah, right. How <laughs> much kidding. you got? No. Um, right. And then, and then, then, then they try to, you know, threaten to sue me. And then they just like drag me through the mud on Twitter. And then they try to get all of their minions to come after me. Oh then they try God. to play night. Like, like, fuck those guys. So like, I don't <laughs> like the thing. Well, is, don't sugarcoat I mean, it for me, Ari. I mean, right. <laughs> but the, well, here's what happened with them. I mean, like, I honestly don't care who wins the distribution war. I don't care. I'm an artist. Like, honestly, I didn't go into this with any vendetta. I tested right. probably eight or 10 of them with yeah. my own music. Yeah. I liked some of them. I liked some of them less. I don't really care. But what happened with Ditto and what happened with a couple others, but then they remedied it, um, was that I, I do my due diligence. I investigate deeply. I talk to people who've used these companies. And Fact when check. I get, when I, get um, yeah. messages from artists saying, hey, I'm really struggling with them. This is what happened to me. Here's my story. Here's my statements. This is what's going on. I forward all of that to the, my contacts at the company. I'm like, yo, what's going on with this? What what happened here? And all the other companies are like, oh, yeah, this is what happened. This is how this went down. You know, we're, we're working on this. There was a glitch in this, whatever. I'm like, okay, that's cool. And I'll write back to that person and be like, this is what they said. And most of the companies remedy that quickly or they let me know what's going on. And I get it. Like, I understand things happen. I don't, whatever. It's just when I hit them up and they got extremely defensive and then threatened to sue me for asking questions about it. And yeah. I'm like, yo, this this is really shady. Like, why are you getting so defensive? So that was like red flag number one. I'm like, okay, if you're getting so defensive about this, uh, there's something that's under the surface. So then I started digging a little bit deeper and I started asking around and then more managers would come up like, oh yeah, this happened to me too. And oh yeah, I haven't gotten paid from them in six months and they won't take my music down. I'm like, okay, well this is serious now. And so then I kept going deeper and deeper. And you know, you, I, and then I feel now it's my responsibility to tell people about that because if not me, who? No right. one is talking about no. this stuff. Like this is such like a new, uh, Billboard's not gonna write about this stuff. Like nobody's talking about this because it's such a nuanced niche part of the indie music community. It's like, which distributor do you use? Like it's right. not sexy Well, it's a new all. world, right? We never used to have to wor right. worry about these kinds of distributors. We had, you know, right. we had BMG and Sony and Universal right. and Capital <laughs> and they did all of this stuff. And now right. in this new world, that's how it happens. Let me ask right. you this, who's doing it right? in those there are a lot doing it right and and i the thing is is like when somebody comes to me and they say which distributor should i use similarly how when they say how should i structure my career i say i don't know it depends on your goals and objectives Fair. so like for instance i love distro kid um I think they're doing a great job. However, they're not right for everybody. They, If you need customized, personalized service, that's not the one for you. Uh, they don't take a commission, which I appreciate, and I like their philosophy, and I I like the people who, I like Philip who runs the company. Mm -hmm. Honestly, a lot can be said about the people who are at the top and running the company, and I just, you know, I, I know Philip's a musician. I know his heart is in the right place. And so, yes, I have gotten complaints from people about DistroKid and I forward them and I'm like, Philip, what happened here? And he right. gets back to right. me right away and he tries to remedy. Well, he weird. actually cares. I know, it's he cares. Um, now, same with CD Baby. I like CD Baby too. I feel like they're really good people over there and their hearts are in the right place. They take 9% commission. That's not right for everybody. Also, you're not gonna get personalized service from them. You know, I like STEM, I like Milana, I think their hearts are in the right place. They take 5%, they're a little bit more personalized. If you want a little bit more personalized service, they can help you out. However, they only distribute to a handful of outlets. So if you're trying to get around the world, they're not the one for you. Um, AWOL, they've made a lot of noise and they try to offer a little bit more personalized service. They take 15%, that's a hard sell to a lot of people, um, especially you know, if they're not gonna give you specialized service. However, if you're really starting to pop, they can 
They like to call it throwing gasoline on the fire. They might give you some money for PR. They might help you with radio. If, if you reach if certain thresholds. Exactly. And so it's like you're kind of rolling the dice with AWOL. It's just like until you, you reach those thresholds, they're not really going to give you the personalized service. And they're just like a distro kid up until a certain level. And then they can kind of help take you from that midpoint and take that's like gotcha. AWOL is the one who got Lauv, uh, helped get Lauv a top 40 hit on the radio. Um, they didn't just say, this is a great song. Let's turn it into a hit. Like, oh, wow, this got 100 million streams on Spotify. Let's see if we can turn this into a hit on the radio. Right. So they already kind of had the momentum going yeah, with that. Yeah, got it. Well, let me ask you this. So are there any of them, and I know you probably get this question a lot with them, sure. that will actually do more than just be the pipes and distribute it? Are there some that have a weekly meeting with the DSPs? Are there some that have relationships right. that if they – they can't do it with everything because of sheer volume. Mm -hmm. We get that. But if something they believe in, like let's say they listen to your music and they go, man, this, this will work. Are yeah. there some of them that can actually affect change with the digital service providers in playlists? So with playlists, I know, because everybody wants to know which, which distributor can help you get on playlists. And, and that's the million dollar question. And the thing is, is that, um, even the ones that say they have relationships, nothing is guaranteed. So, okay, let me give you a perfect example. Sure. Um, we decided to go with AWOL uh, for Brassroots District's uh, first couple singles to test them out. I'd never worked with them before. They claimed to me that they had relationships with the, with the DSPs. They could do the playlist thing. They had a sync licensing department. I'm like, okay, this sounds good. Like maybe those services are worth 15%. And so they... You know, uh, they were really into the music. Uh, we, we do throwback funk soul. This is not pop. This is not like this is I where there's no hopes for rap caviar or today's <laughs> top hits or anything like that. I've, I've, there's no illusions here. Like I know exactly where we fit in the market. It is not hip. It is not new. It is not pop. And so but that being said, there are significant numbers of playlists on Spotify where the music would fit. Absolutely. And fit. Yeah. And there's get the funk out of here playlist. I mean, I made a list of like 20 Spotify playlists. I'm like, this music would fit right here. Like, this is perfect for these playlists. And AWOL was, you know, they seemed to passionately care. We had, a, I had a couple meetings in the office, like where we played the songs from oh, the wow. record. Oh, wow. It's like a label meeting. I mean, like, yeah. we talked about the record. And then, and they were really excited about it. They came out to our first show and they were like cheering it on. And then this first single comes out and we got on zero official Spotify playlists. And then I'm like, okay, well, can we work sync? And then they took it to the sync department. Like, well, we're not really getting briefs for this, this kind of music. I'm like, okay, so what am I paying 15% for now? Like, I like all that. Like I said, we got 150,000 streams or so so far, and we're getting like 10,000. Is that from user curated playlists? That's yes. So he, here's the thing. You want to know what the number one playlist that we're on that's driving almost 4,000 streams a month from? The right. number one place that we're on is called Low Volume Funk. I created this playlist. <laughs> <laughs> I made this That's playlist. Awesome. I built up this playlist. I promoted it. I like targeted these various groups who I knew would love that loves funk music, and I sure. went to them and I got all these people to follow it. It's an extremely active playlist. It's bringing us four thousand monthly streams, and it's a playlist that I made because we couldn't <laughs> get on any of these other look, playlists. Look, we always tell people to create their own playlist and drive traffic right. to it too. Here's here's a, a success story. Right, that is so, awesome. You know, I was pretty disappointed. Uh, I, I like. I like the AWOL people and I think again I think their hearts are in the right place and but like it's a really hard sell and I learned this you know going through it if they're gonna take 15% I I don't feel like their their app which they like to talk about a lot and their app is really really good it's an analytics app yeah. it's awesome I don't think that's worth 15% of all the money that's coming in and so you know Getting back to your original question of, are there any distributors that have these relationships that can make it happen? Uh, the short answer is not really. There's no guarantees. Your honesty um, is refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like AWOL talks to them, STEM talks to the DSPs, Symphonic Distribution talks to the DSPs. You know, all of them like to say they do this, but um, for instance, a friend of mine who makes um, funk soul music, 
she used DistroKid and got onto some really hot Spotify playlist when her album came out. DistroKid's not talking to the DSPs for this artist that they've never heard of. It just happened for her yeah. because she used that submission tool in Spotify Artists in the back end, and they started to see that there was some traction happening. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't in a vacuum. Like that's the other thing that that any distributor will be the first to say to tell you this. Um, it's not all about you can't bet like you said you can't bet the horse on uh, playlist. That's not your yeah. entire marketing strategy. So right. like for my friend. Uh, she got she had a publicist she got some press she she had a paste um, she had a paste feature now when she got the paste feature she's like well this is cool but it didn't bring her any listeners right however when her album came out a month later she was able to say in that Spotify artist backend I had a feature on paste and then now I got a narrative now you got a story exactly yeah. and so Spotify was like oh this artist is actually putting some work into their career and she could say oh I played these shows and here's my socials, and here's the fans. And then they went to the, her profile. I was like, oh, wow, she's on no editorial playlist. She has, um, she's getting about 30,000 monthly listeners. She's yeah. on no playlist. Like, okay, she's making shit happen right now. And so let's pop her on a few playlists. Yeah. And she used DistroKid. And like, it's not about DistroKid though. She could have used TuneCore or CD Baby. Yeah. It's like, and so I'm at a point now where it's like, if AWOL couldn't make it happen for us, where we literally, they were like, I, the president came up to me at South by last year, the president of AWOL who, in London, he like put a meeting on the books um, to meet with me at South by, and he's like, Ari, this is before our, our single had come out. He's like, Ari, what can we do for Brass Roots District? How can we help you? And I'm like, playlist and sync. That's what I want. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm like, a simple guy. <laughs> right, playlist and sync. That's how you can help me. Make yeah. it happen. And they couldn't make that happen. Yeah. So I'm like, if the president of the company w says they want to come up and they want to do something for me and they couldn't do it and they everyone at the company seems to be cheering it on and they couldn't do it. And I know the music doesn't suck. Like I, if the music sucked, fine. Of course. Obviously I'm biased, but at the same time, like it's resonating with a lot of people and we have some significant players in the industry that are behind it. And there's like, there's a lot of, social traction and, and we've built up a significant yeah. um, amount yeah. of actual listeners and fans. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, these people dig the music. Obviously it's hard to be, you know, uh, objective about your own music, but like these people dig it. And I like if, and I know it would fit on these playlists. Like, yeah. and, if they and you listen to these like, playlists and you hear the, the music. Yeah. I, I think you can be more objective than maybe you think you can with your music. But at the end of the day, it's a meritocracy, right? Supposedly that it's right. based on the quality of the track, but it's frustrating yeah. sometimes when you are like for me, marketing artists and yeah. some of them get tons of uh, spins and some of them don't get any placement and it's right. frustrating when I know how good it is. And it's not just me. It's not just my opinion. I see that people are going to their shows and they're lining up yes. around the block. You yes. know, it, it's not just me. But listen, right. we're, we're running out of time, but I want to do two things. One, um, I, I would love to have you back anytime because I could literally talk to you all day. <laughs> no, you yeah, know, with yeah, a pot right. of coffee, yeah. Ari, you and I could right. solve all the music industry <laughs> problems. So. <laughs> the other part is you've got so much going on. Where can people you know, get the book, how to make it in the new music business. Where can they find you? Where can they, um, you know, subscribe yeah. to Ari's take and stuff? Sure. So yeah, the book, um, the book is available pretty much anywhere. Um, so how to make it in the new music business. It's on Amazon. It's at most, uh, any brick and mortar bookstore. If you have an independent bookstore that you'd like to frequent, go to the indie bookstore and or they'll order it for you. Um, so you awesome. can get the book anywhere. Um, the you can subscribe to my newsletter. It's just ariestake.com, and I, I send out all of the uh, my new articles and writings and everything I'm learning there. Um, and then my band right now is Brassroots District. It's uh, so if you're into funk, soul music, and that throwback sound, you can find <laughs> Brassroots District uh, everywhere. Uh -huh. Awesome. Ari, it's it's always a pleasure talking with you. I hope we can do this again soon, man. Yeah, thanks a lot. And and you guys go check out uh, Hypebot and uh, yep. uh, check out Ari's stuff online. Uh, that's cool. it for another episode of Music Biz Weekly. We're out of here.